Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to the 4th Autumn 2024 update. Gav's weather vid. So here we go again, time to bring you more autumn data. We are up to update number 4 and we're going to do a QBO special for you on uh, this one. So we're going to be looking at the quasi biennial oscillation and we'll be looking at autumns that are kind of roughly around the same uh, position that we currently are with the uh, QBO. Now I should get on that for you in a moment just to say that the first video of this day was our 6am UK weather forecast. We will be live at 6pm. We attend a 14 day hour and uh, we are going to be showing some long range in that live stream as well. It's a certainly live stream, so we're going to show you some long range. And uh, as I say, that will be coming up for you at 6 pm this evening. Please like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that for Gaz Worthy. Thank you so much, Richard, for our amazing autumn updates gift. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much, Rich. So vibrant, so colourful. Thank you so much, my friend, uh, the amazing Richard Shaw. And also, thank you so much to Shrian. Try Brill for sorting out the uh, years for us for this uh, update. So hashtag Team Gav, as always, doing a splendid job uh, for me and for uh, all of us with our long range updates. Uh, I tell you that the um, autumn forecast, by the way, is going to be released on Sunday, the 25th of August. So we've still got a while to go before we uh, get to the autumn forecast. Of course, it's a little bit late starting these updates. We'll be being in the hospital. we we'll missed the first two Sundays. But uh, autumn updates will be uh, continuing through uh, the remainder of the summer up to the 25th of August. And then we will release the uh, Gaz Webby's autumn forecast then. So uh, that's going to be an auspicious day, I think, on the 25th of August. Uh, right, OK, let's crack on then. We're going to have a look, as I say, at the uh, QBO, the quasi biennial oscillation. Now, this is a particularly a winter driver, but we do look at it all year round. So this is from um, NASA. So uh, with this, you have to think that we've got the uh, levels of the atmosphere up here, right the way from the uh, top of the atmosphere in the stratosphere at 10 HPA down to the troposphere, which is 30 to 50 HPA through here. The troposphere is the boundary level of the atmosphere where weather is uh, taking place. So, uh, the QBO, the quasi biennial oscillation, is basically an oscillating phase in terms of the strength of the uh, zonal westerlies. So, uh, when you're in a westerly QBO, you strengthen the zonal westerlies. And, of course, that's particularly important in the winter, in the northern hemisphere. When you're in an easterly QBO, you weaken the zonal westerlies. And, again, that's particularly important in the, uh, in the winter time for the northern hemisphere. So, this blue green area here is the last easy phase of the quasi-biennial oscillation, the QBO, moving from the stratosphere down into the uh, troposphere through 2023 and into 2024. This is our next westerly QBO phase, and you can see how that has come from the stratosphere down into uh, the troposphere. It now is in that boundary level, but I'm talking about that is the troposphere. Uh, my line's got a bit wonky, but get the idea <laughs> from, 50, from 30 to uh, 50 HPA there. Uh, again, my line's a bit wonky, but you can see how that uh, sandy brown area has uh, descended now from the, um, you know, from the, from the uh, stratosphere to the troposphere. So, obviously, the last Western QBO phase is uh, just here. You can see that we're only at the start of this uh, westerly QBO phase, so uh, we've got uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of months to go. Uh, the autumn will be a strengthening uh, westerly QBO autumn. And uh, then we will probably reach the peak for the westerly QBO from the winter through to the uh, spring, I would imagine. And possibly into uh, next summer as well. Certainly the early part of next summer. 
So uh, basically, we're going to be looking at autumn that are coinciding with strengthening uh, Wesley QBOs. We've got uh, 1957 showing up as our first autumn. This one with above average heights out to the west. And if we change the colour, we've got below average heights to the north and the northeast. It means that we bring the wind in from a uh, west or northwesterly direction. Well, it's a relatively cool signal that uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, autumn of 1957, quite a dry signal as well. It has a cool wet September in 1957, and then I think the rest of the autumn is uh, relatively dryish with uh, an anticyclonic influence. 1959 is our next uh, autumn with a strengthening West QBO. This is coming at the end of a long, hot summer. So it's one of those that's very, very extended summer. And uh, we see that uh, pattern continuing into the autumn as well. So but the summer pattern for 1959 actually gets going in the spring in March and April. Of course, it reaches its peak, in, its peak in terms of the heat in the summer itself of 1959. But even into September and October, we keep lots of anticyclonic influences going, lots of dry and uh, warm or very warm temperatures. It's not really until like late October into November that the pattern finally shifts into uh, a wetter and also milder pattern. But through most of that autumn, it's a dry and warm with an extended summer from spring to autumn. Uh, we've got 1966. This is a much more unsettled autumn. So for, <laughs> forget what I was just talking about there. Um, this one with lots of low pressure across the north and west of Europe has high pressure also out in the uh, Atlantic as well. Uh, really, really wet autumn. Uh, copious amounts of uh, rain through that uh, autumn in 1966. We got 1975, next strengthening uh, westerly QBO autumn. This has a wet September in the middle of a drought. So uh, we have a long drought that takes place really from the end of 1974 to the summer of 76. That to prolonged drought breaks in the autumn of 76, of course, well, right at the very, very end of the summer, actually, but uh, has a very wet autumn 76. But 75 is generally quite a dryish autumn, but does have a wet September after a long hot summer in 1975. You get a wet September, uh, and uh, then the anticyclone uh, tends to uh, sort of reshape it a little bit through the uh, latter part of the uh, autumn. Overall, it's relatively mild autumn in 75, as as I said, it does have that wet September. Autumn 1982 is showing up next. This one, a uh, very wet autumn, low pressure in the Atlantic, bringing the uh, low pressure into Western Europe as well. So that's an unsettled and wet autumn. A bit surprised he has a dry September, though. I think he's writing a term that it turns um, much wetter. My daughter, as well, winds are from west and from the southwest. 1987 uh, shows up next. This, of course, coincides with the uh, with, with, with the hurricane that was not, um, you know, the October storm in uh, 1987. Um, the Mike Fish storm. Um, so, uh, overall, though, it's an unsettled autumn, really, uh, generally quite mild, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. It has a very wet October, you know, with that um, month has been October storm in 87. But September and also November are quite unsettled bumps as well, I think. So, that's just a mild and wet autumn, really, in uh, 1987. 1992 is uh, quite a mixed autumn as well, with low pressure away to the east and uh, winds coming in from the northwest has quite a cool unsettled september uh has a cold october especially later on in october of 1992 uh really harsh frosts. actually the frost in late october 1992 is probably harder than anything that happens through the winter of 92 93 although there is a very frosty spell around christmas to new year actually in 1992 um no probably not but there is a very harsh frost you know uh in late october 
like you see. And then November is just generally mild and, and, and quite wet. Another unsettled autumn then. I've got 2010 showing up. So uh, check this out with a strengthening westerly QPO. It's autumn 2010 with low pressure across the north and west of Europe. This will be peaked to the interest of cold is Low pressure across the north and west of Europe. High pressure blocking around Greenland. So this is setting up a pattern for the December to remember of course, in uh, 2010. Has um, about average uh, temperatures for September and also quite an unsettled September as well, which for around that period is quite unusual because we have got used to uh, a run of, of very dry and warm uh, September through the first decade of, uh, uh, of this century. So uh, a coolish, wettish September, then turns drier but becomes quite chilly in October, maybe a heads up of what's to come. And then November, very interesting. The first half of November is generally mild and unsettled. The second half of November becomes really freezing cold, uh, especially the final week of the month when, you know, the big freeze really starts to, uh, to, to bed in with severe frost and snow across uh, large portions of the country, which, of course, is building up then to the freezing cold and very, very snowy December to remember in 2010. And that uh, did have a strengthening westerly QBO. Uh, in complete contrast, we've got <laughs> autumn 2015. So um, this one with lots of high pressure. Uh, covering much of Europe, low pressure is out in the Atlantic. So the autumn of 2015, let's get this right, has quite a cool September, actually. Not overly wet, but quite cool. I think the last time September had a CT of 12s is in 2015. Um, and then it gets progressively milder as the autumn goes along with an exceptionally mild and pretty wet uh, November setting up the exceptionally mild winter, one of the mildest winters on record for 2015. 2016. And then the last autumn with a strengthening westerly QBO was uh, the autumn 2022. This one, quite an unsettled autumn after the hot summer. Uh, low pressure back in from the Atlantic with uh, the westerlies. In fact, it's been pretty unsettled, I think, ever since <laughs> the uh, autumn 2022. You know, breaking the long hot summer of uh, 2022. So it's a wet autumn over with above average rainfall, low pressure in from the Atlantic. Bit of a blocking signal as well away from the north, away to the north, but didn't come to anything for the winter, really, of, of 22, 23. And uh, higher pressure down to uh, the south as well. Overall, a mild and wet autumn 2022. But I think it does have quite a cool November. Right, let's put all of that together then. So this is how all Septembers combined are looking uh, with a strengthening phase of the uh, Westy QPO. And it's an unsettled uh, signal for these autumns with low pressure in from the Atlantic into northern and west Europe. High pressure tends to be down across southern, southeast of parts of Europe, so it could be quite a hot, dry signal for the Balkans. Italy, for example, eastern, part, eastern portion of the Med. But for northern and west Europe, it looks like it's quite a, a, a wettish and probably quite coolish signal uh, a lot of time. Again, there will be years that deviate, so we've got 1975, uh, 1959, I should say, in there, which was a, a very dry and also a warm September. We've also got 1982, which I think was quite a dry and warm September as well. So years are deviating, but overall it looks like, a, a, you know, put it all together, relatively wettest signal for the uh, Septembers. All Octobers combined, with a strengthening Western QBO phase, uh, shows higher pressure up towards Scandinavia, low pressure both still dominating across much of uh, West Europe. So possibly October could be a drier month with that Scandinavian high, but looks like a lot of the time the low pressure still keeping things pretty unsettled. And then all November's combined, uh, looking like that. Again, all three autumn months actually looking quite unsettled here, so you would expect a, a rather wet autumn, really, with with a lot of these, uh, you know, with a lot of these um, years. High pressure is down towards Spain, so probably a relatively mildest signal, though we might get a northwest southeast alignment to rejection, but I will think a lot of the time in November that, uh, uh, that high pressure towards Spain will be bringing up southwesterly winds. So yeah, relatively mild, but probably quite wet signal really 
for many of these strengthening Westy QPO autumns. And these are all autumns combined, looking finally when we are in the uh, strengthening phase, uh, strengthening Westy phase of quasi Siberian Ossetian. And it looks unsettled, unsurprisingly, given the years we've just been looking at. Low pressure dominating from the Atlantic into Western Europe. Again, there's use of deviating that. So, 1959 was generally quite settled and warm until late October. It was really November, end of October into November, but um, more unsettled, etc. So, years of deviate, but overall, um, a rather wet and uh, unsettled Atlantic-driven signal for many of those autumns when the uh, westy phase of the QPO is strengthening up. And that's it. That is your fourth Autumn 2024 update. So thank you so much, everybody, for uh, watching. Thank you so much to Richard and to Shrian for all of the help on this uh, update. Unbelievable. Hashtag Team Gav did a fantastic job. So thank you so much to Rich and also to Shrian. For all about. Um, right, okay, so uh, that's your fourth autumn update. As I say, each one of these updates is building up a picture forensically to uh, the point where we get to the end of the uh, season of updates and we release our forecast. I set that video. Gaz Web is autumn 2024 forecast will be released on uh, Sunday, the 25th of August. So, um, what's that? About, about six weeks, is it? I don't know, probably. Um, no, yeah, we've still got plenty of updates to get through, but uh, that's when we'll, that, that's when we will release the forecast. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll do another autumn update for you next week, of course. We're going to be live at 6 pm. We can take a 14 day, and uh, also with some long range. I know England are playing Spain in the Euro uh, final at 8 pm. Don't worry, I'll have the live stream wrapped up well before then. Get it wrapped up at 7. So um, it's all to come, it's all to be revealed. Not only my live stream, but also what happens with England v Spain. Um, uh, I see a little bit later on maybe but for the fourth autumn 2024 update that's all for now and thanks for watching